These sounds, these chords, are so beautiful to me. I just love the sound and the feel that it, it gives me. Now, I'm gonna come clean and be honest. When I started playing, I didn't understand what I'm doing. I literally like tried to learn shapes, whether it was the basic shapes or later on bar chords or even dominant chords. I was really excited to learn D7. I was like, wow, it's a seven chord. But I actually didn't get it. What is a seven? I, I, completely didn't understand what is happening and how it relates and man this is a huge thing because I, I lost so much time i care about your time and i want to save your time and i think this is a really good way to do that before we dive in actually please click the like button and subscribe to the channel it would really mean a lot thank you when we're talking about music we have four main colors major minor ooh, diminished and augmented. Each one of them contains this emotional baggage, a feeling, and this is what makes music so cool. It just makes you feel something, you can't really explain it, but this chord versus this chord feels in a certain way, the same way that this feels in a certain way and provokes some emotion. If you understand what you're doing, you can actually save a ton of time and make crazy progress really fast. So let me solve this to you right now. Now the trick for us as musicians, as beginners, intermediate or advanced, we want to tag this information. It doesn't matter if C major or it's G7 flat 13. It's the same concept. It's understanding the framework in a truthful way and trying to hear and listen as much as we can and not just kind of copy pasting. So the first distinction that we want to really make is major to minor. Now, I know you've done it before probably, but I want us to really pay attention because if you actually hear it really well, it's a huge deal and it will serve you for many, many years. Question, what is the most valuable advice you ever got for guitar and music? Please drop a comment. I want us to all share advices because yeah, we can just learn more and this is super awesome. Thank you. So just sing the bass with me for one second. And ask yourself, what does it make you feel, right? So that question is something that I ask myself or try to ask myself all the time. And therefore I can tag these colors and pieces of information so I can yet later on utilize them and actually use them in different ways. So again, major versus minor. And it, there's no shame of making mistakes. It's just a process of learning the same way that you learn colors. So the black shirt, this guitar is red, etc., etc. So, okay, that's cool. Probably done it before, but now let's listen to the diminished sound. So this is fully diminished. I'm just gonna play this, this kind of color for a second. Versus major. So again, comparing colors, right? So again, major and diminished okay wow just different color and i'll explain exactly what's happening there in a second but it's important to just feel it before we even dive into the logic okay and what about this color hmm, this is augmented versus major augmented versus major all right so we hopefully understand and can feel that there is something that is changing in each one of these colors we'll go back to it one more time but now i just want to look at the basic framework of what is a chord and then from that place of understanding we can go and get to really really cool places of seven chords and extensions all these things are not complicated once we understand what we're doing if you want to know more about shapes and chords i made a full workshop about jazz chords you can check this out here it's very very thorough with a lot of information and shapes check it out a chord consists of three notes one three and five so one can be c e will be the third and g would be the five why is that i'm literally playing the notes in the key of c major so one two three four five and i'm just grabbing the first the third and the fifth note which gives me what we call a major triad now if I want to change that chord into minor, I'm lowering the third. Now of course, you've probably done it before, I just want to make sure it's really clear and you, you tag it. So even if you've done it, just try and listen really carefully so you truly feel it. And tag 
tag it on this emotion level. So again, major versus minor. I'm taking the E natural and, and flatting that. So this is E flat here instead of E natural. This is C major versus C minor. Now it's important because even when we're playing this kind of chord, C major, we actually want to see what is happening there. It's not just a shape, it's like C and E and G and C and an open E here. So that means, for example, if I understand it in a truthful way, I can play this melody here in a G. Or maybe I can just lift this finger and get a C major 7. So all these things are possible once we understand the framework. What is a diminished, basically minor, but flattening the 5 as well. So minor, flat 5. This is a diminished um, triad. So 1, flat 3, flat 5. And this is this kind of bitey color. Again, try to think about what it makes you feel. And anything is fine as long as you tag it for yourself. Um, some people say this is happy versus sad. Uh, for me, this is kind of like a very dark sound versus this magical sound of the augmented always feels to me like this kind of magical this kind of like magical beast or, or something that's kind of like out of this world a little bit is happening and it's indeed being used in classical music and repertoire to describe this kind of supernatural uh, feeling at times. Um, but you can again tag whatever it makes, makes sense for you. So major, minor, diminish and the augmented is basically major but sharp five, so augmented fifth. So this is the basic color. Okay, so now this is really nice and everything, but of course we wanna play these things on guitar and we wanna hear them. So the first thing I wanna do is adding the seven because I think it sounds really great. So I'm gonna just use the shell chord for a second because they're simple, they're easy, and they're super functional. So I'm gonna play F major seven here. What I'm doing is basically playing one, three, and seven. What is a seven? Literally counting up. So if I'm in F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh note in the key of F, so F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E. So E is a seventh. And I'm kind of just playing one, three, and seven. This is shell chord, this is kind of like taking out the five just to have like the basic, basic sounds. Cause when we talk about chords, the most important notes are the one, sorry, are the three, and the seven, so they give us the information whether the chord is major or minor, and they give us the information if it's a seven chord with major seven, which is more tonic, more home bass, versus more dominant, more tension. That's why a lot of times with shell chords, this kind of simplistic way of playing, not in a bad way, um, you just have three notes, so the one, the three, and the seven. So just listen to that. This is major seven versus dominant seven. So this is F seven. So this is F major seven and this is F seven. And just think what it makes you feel, literally how it feels. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer here. Just major seven versus seven. For me, when I hear this, I feel this kind of lush feeling, very stable, but kind of like, you know, I'm laying on a couch or something. It's really chill. And then when I'm hearing this seven, this dominant, there is some tension. Something is gonna happen. There's, I'm like, ah, oh, there's, there's, there's something that's gonna happen soon. I'm not sure what, but maybe it's going here. But just something is moving. There's like, oh, wait, what? Okay, tell me, tell me what's going on. That's how I'm feeling a little bit, right? Major seven, seven, and this is minor seven. Way softer, right? It's interesting. Major seven, dominant seven, minor seven and this is these shapes again just look at these simple shapes F major seven F seven F minor seven and this is my shape for diminished uh, it, this shape also works really well for minor six so again what is important for me is to feel the feeling. It's really important to find this balance between learning information and making music, and they both kind of push each other. So one of the things that I like doing is, you know, taking something simple, just like the shell chords in C. I'll take the first four chords, so maybe I'll say F, E minor, D minor, and C, and I'm also telling myself the four chord, the three, the two, and the one, and I'm telling myself, major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven. And then maybe I'll just loop that.
right? So even something as simple as that, four, three, two, one, can be music. I mean, again, maybe it's not a song yet, but I'm just trying to move information from this world of like, oh, I'm studying major sevens, and to the world of like, oh, ah, I can play this major seven and double the E because it's an open E and this has an E here as well. An E. Ooh, D minor seven with an E, that's D minor seven nine. Another favorite thing of mine is to try and find some limitations. So I'm gonna show you the shell chords also on the sixth string and then I'll do this exercise um, where I'm just gonna use shell chords and trying to move around shapes and colors around the fretboard. So again, we have uh, from the sixth string, this is G major seven, this is G seven, G minor seven, and this is G diminished. These four colors will serve us pretty well. So now I'm going to try and just move between these shapes, these four colors and these four colors from the um, fifth string and sixth string. And I'm gonna try and just kind of like let it be. There's no structure, there's no anything. I'm just trying to imagine colors and some hopefully melodies and see what happens. And in the process, I'm trying to, again, listen as much as I can and tag the information. actually hard to do because I'm imagining and hearing other chords and colors that I kind of want to use but I'm not using but it was really fun and interesting exercise for me because again I was limiting myself for four shapes but still you can find stuff and the tension between what you imagine and what you're finding is always really cool so I'm just kind of trying to encourage the exploration of this information because I think it will yield a lot of really cool stuff even if it's sometimes not conscious then you could be like hey what is that that just happened? Oh, this is E7, E flat seven, whoa, with this, this is cool, this is the flat nine, ah, okay, E, fl e flat seven with an E on top, E flat seven, flat nine with open string, cool, D7 with E, oh, this is D7 nine, etc., etc. One last thing that I think is really important to remember in this process is that it is a process, right? So it's not kind of a one day, it's like, oh, I just woke up and I know all the chords in the world, no. First, we don't need to know all the chords in the world. The second thing is, I think it's about feeling and understanding something in a clear way and utilizing it. So I would say, just work on these four shapes. Two, three, four, and here. One, two, three, four. If you have that, you have a lot. And then of course, you can look at a piece of music and say like, oh wow, okay, this is A7. I can use my shell chord here, or this shell chord. Wow, this is B minor seven here or here super cool right so again it sounds simple but actually when you know something to a great extent you can utilize it and start seeing all these beautiful connections and of course later on you're like wow can i want that you know sharp five on the c major uh sharp four sorry <laughs> this f sharp here um because you can start imagining the colors and and kind of hear it in a more clear way and then of course it's a process so just Enjoy the ride and take your time slowly but surely. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was cool and interesting for you. Um, and for me, it's just like really interesting to try and talk about these things because I, I care about your time and I want to save your time. And I think this is a really good way to do that. So thanks again. I'll see you very soon. Peace out. <laughs>